and freedom then? Most people say they want it. What are you prepared to do to achieve freedom? What are you prepared to do to change? Do you really want freedom? How much do you value truth? Does it come before everything else? Or would you rather cow tail to a modicum of comfort instead of having the courage to speak the truth? Because it may come with a, an element of alienating yourself from society and your friends and your family. Don't worry, I'm not going to be feeding you reassuring lies today. And I do hope you can handle the truth. Juice. <laughs> so, so there are only two mistakes you can make on the road to truth. Not starting and not going all the way. Now, I don't know where you guys are at, but if you're not vegan anarchists, you haven't gone all the way yet. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with this axiom. Human slavery is the problem and natural law is the solution. So there's, there's many problems that we suffer collectively as a species. War, disease, pollution, wage slavery, chemtrails, many, many other entropic forces. Politics, money, religion are also symptoms to our collective ignorance to natural law. Virtually all worldly suffering is due to this, even things like whales being washed up full of plastic. If humans were free, we would utilise hemp for plastics. We wouldn't be chopping down the forest and drilling oil either, but I'll be getting into hemp a little bit later on. So natural law is like a virus cleanup. It removes all the bugs and malware from the operating system, like your computer, so that it operates properly and smoothly. So it's like a human brain cleanup from religious dogma, poisoned worldviews, and incorrect beliefs and ideologies. Natural law holds the key that will unlock all the doors to self-imposed suffering and slavery. Um, show of hands actually, who's heard of Mark Passio? Okay, okay, cool. Have you uh, gone through all of his podcasts or much, much of his work? Excellent. So some of, some of this information is going to resonate with you, you'll, you'll be familiar with this, but this, so you, the guys that haven't, this is, this is great information to, to be hearing today. So I would like to point you to Mark Passio's website, whatonearthishappening.com, there's just so much information on there, and it's all critical knowledge, so uh, check it out, and work, work through his podcasts or his videos. So the current human condition, diagnosis, by way or through a way of knowledge. Uh, so through knowledge, we can diagnose and cure the current human condition of slavery and self-imposed suffering. And Manly P. Hall, someone that we should be listening to, he said, we must outgrow the cause. There can be no problem overcome unless the cause is outgrown. And it's not outgrown through ages of suffering, but through proper intelligent education. So the cause being our ignorance to natural law, the solution would be learning, living and teaching it. It's not through ages of suffering, by voting. So voting comes from the Latin votum, which actually means to make a wish or a pledge, which is usually to a deity. So not through ages of suffering, doing the same thing over and over again, which is the definition of insanity. Voting for a slave master that you wish may wish whip you less than the next one. So voting's an illusion of choice anyway, you know, or, or having revolutions without addressing the causal factor, you're just going to revolve again and go around and around in the same psych ill cycle, right? So this is our collective ignorance to natural law. So what is natural law then? Natural, inherent in nature, reality and truth. It's not caused or made by man. And law is an existing condition which is binding and cannot be changed. So natural... It's nature, it is, it exists, and laws like gravities and thermodynamics cause and effect, they're immutable, you cannot change these laws. In uh, ancient Egypt, the uh, Comitian tradition, they, uh, goddess Mart was revered, and she was the goddess of truth, morality, and natural law. And in, in their culture, it was known that if you didn't, in the weighing of the heart ceremony, if, if you didn't leave a moral, lead, lead a moral life, then, then you'd be eaten by uh, Sobek, the crocodile-headed god, 
and, it, and exist in eternal damnation. So as many people seem to equate, when you say natural law and na nature, they, they seem to equate it to Darwinian theory, the survival of the fittest. Whereas natural law wouldn't be that. Natural law isn't the Darwinian theory, which is just a theory. But it's more like uh, in, you, in your own body, you've got trillions of cells all coexisting. And they're all working together and they, they're creating the miracle that is you. So natural law isn't here to, in a competitive nature. It's here as, it's to, so we exist alongside it for our betterment. So we, we minimise suffering by, by aligning to it. Not through a, a threat of violence, as man's law would, but because we, we acknowledge it, we understand it, and we align to it. So many people would call it universal law or spiritual law or karmic law. It's basically don't steal. You know, the golden rule, do, don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to yourself. So it's basically you can do what you like as long as you're not causing harm or theft. You're not stealing anything from anyone. So you're not stealing their freedoms, their rights, their property, their labour. Well, you're not lying, which is a, a theft of the truth. So rape would be a theft of someone's rights to who they, want, who they choose to have sex with. Murder's theft of their, their life. They know an actual physical theft of someone's property. So any wrongdoing ultimately result is, is a theft. So don't steal. And sometimes it's easier to look at things in the apophatic sense. Like many of you remember the, the 80s game where you'd flick down the, the faces to you, so you find out what they don't look like to know who they are. So in natural law, it's easier to know what, what is wrong to know what is right. Because so obviously there's an un, almost an unlimited amount of rights, you know, an almost an unlimited amount of actions we can take that don't result in the theft of something. So right versus wrong, as far as natural law is concerned, it is something which is correct by definition. It isn't a lie, it is based in truth. It is moral, it is in harmony with natural law, and actions based in it do not result in the harm or loss to other sentient beings. So then a wrong is something which is incorrect by definition, it's not right, it is immoral, it is in opposition to natural law, and actions based in it result in harm or loss. So, and this is objective, so this is objective morality. So it's not subjective or relative, and that's, that's where we collectively as a species have gone wrong. We've, we've, we've not adhered to this, we've not recognised this, and we're, we've gone into a deplorable sway of moral relativism and religious dogma and all the, all the other stuff. So it is, it is possible to know the objective difference between right and wrong behaviour, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. And we can simplify it. This is natural law. That's natural law. Do no harm. So that's the feminine aspect. So, you know, when, when we say anarchy, anarchy, anarchon, which literally means without rulers. So it doesn't mean without rules. So there do need to be rules in order for there to be a coherent and um, orderly society. So these would be the two pillars of enlightenment that needs to go along with them not having any masters. We all need to recognise these, these truths, that we have the right to d defend ourselves if someone is trying to do harm, and that we should not be causing harm. And if we do, then the person that we're violating has the right to defend themselves, right? So, do no harm. Don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to yourself, which is the apophatic version of the golden rule, do unto others. Uh, so this is the, the sacred feminine or the non-aggression principle and the sacred masculine and the, and the non... Uh, sorry, the, the sacred masculine self-defence principle. So a lot of people would be overly passive or submissive um, and they're, they're pacifistic, you know, and they would never, never initiate... But they'd, they'd call it violence rather than force, but they wouldn't defend themselves, they wouldn't stand up to themselves, and that's a very odd, dangerous ideology to be into. Um, because you just end up getting walked, up, walked all over, you know? And, and again, you shouldn't be a dominator. So you shouldn't go out there and dominate. This should be common sense or common knowledge, and this is where the word conscience comes from, to know together 
which is skio skiere is where we where the science the word science comes from to know and because we don't collectively know this together that's why reality is in the chaos that it's in we've got all of the war and all the things i mentioned at the beginning all of the suffering because we don't know right from wrong together <laughs> and it's just crazy but that's 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 the why so you know i'm really getting into the why today and it's very important to know the why so a lot of researchers uh, and I, I mean david ike might have woken up with a lot of people but he, he doesn't get down to the why he doesn't talk about the solution so let's look at some natural law principles I, I won't be going into them all in detail just for the time rest constraints today so these are seven hermetic principles the principles of truth are seven he who knows these understandingly possess the master key for whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open so who's read the Kabal the Kabal <laughs> the Kybalion? okay please please get this book it's about 90 pages and it's just golden absolutely golden so the, the Kybalion. The Kybalion, yeah. yeah. So you've got the principle of mentalism, where uh, everything is mental, the, the universe is mental. So the principle of correspondence, the principle of vibration, the principle of polarity, the principle of rhythm, the principle of cause and effect, and the principle of gender. So again, so I haven't got time to go into these, so I'd urge you to read the Kybalion. Another book which I'd recommend you, you guys read is The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke. So the Kybalion's quite heady, it can be quite hard to read, but The End of All Evil is a modern book and it's very simply written, and it's very beautifully and elegantly written, and it's very sanitising. It's about 100 pages, that one. They're both free online on, in PDF. So. That's by a guy called Jeremy Locke. Um... The eighth principle, which Mark Passio has coined the eighth principle, the principle of care, as the loss principle. So the loss principle of care is the dynamic of care. What we care about on a day-to-day -day basis acts as the driving force of our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Therefore, care can be seen as the ultimate generator of the quality of our experience. This principle has often been referred to as the generative principle. The word generative is derived from the Latin verb genare, which means to create. And I don't care creates a prison for everybody. So as a, as a human being, we've, our consciousness is composed of three elements, our thoughts, our actions, and our emotions. So the care would be the emotional aspect. And we need to have all of these three in alignment. So to not, to not care is bad, and it is wrong. If you don't care, not only are you creating a prison, but you're a bad person if you don't, don't care. And I'm, I'm going to be getting into some occult, this is occulted knowledge, what I'm talking about now. So when we say occult, a lot of people would, would envision something which is possibly dangerous or you know, something you shouldn't look into because it might create something bad in your life. But it's, it's not. That, that's by design, so we don't look into it. And the occult is literally hidden knowledge. And this knowledge has been obfuscated and confused so that people have that connotation like i say so it's not looked into so it literally means hidden from sight so oculus hidden you know um ocular optics that's where it comes from so it's just just hidden knowledge the occult hidden from sight what is it it comprises of a lot of information it's not just a study into one field it's a, an eclectic study into all the mystery traditions. And they should all be studied alongside each other. So they're all intellect and they basically all cover knowledge of self. This is what we're, we're talking about. Knowledge of self, the universe and natural law. And ultimately the raising of consciousness. Alchemy, astrology, Kabbalah, Freemasonry, Hermeticism, Rosicrucianism, Tarot, Theosophy and Gnosticism. To name but a few. A working definition of the occult would be that it's a body of science that is not widely known to the general population, consisting of hidden knowledge about the workings of the human psyche and the laws of nature, 
both seen, the physical laws, and the unseen, the spiritual laws. So the three components which I mentioned, thoughts, actions, and emotions, what you think, so you feel, and thus must act. So this is the most occulted information that I'm getting into natural law. This is something they really don't want you to understand. And this, this information has been hidden in the mystery school traditions, like Christ, Christianity, where you've got the, the Holy Trinity. God, sorry, God, Mary, and Jesus. So God, the masculine element would be the mind, the feminine element would be the emotion, and the, the saviour figure, is all, which is always a man, in, because it represents action. All of the, the children in the Trinity is always a, 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 a male child. So God joining with Mary, the sacred masculine, with the sacred feminine, birth, right action in the world, the allegorical Jesus. So this is esoteric knowledge, which is knowledge likely to be understood or known by a few, or a few with specialised knowledge or interests, from the Latin eso, meaning within or into. So this is an introduction, really, in my presentation. It's a crash course in some esoteric information. Whereas on the, the other side, you'd have exoteric, so knowledge widely known by the general population. This, so this would be everybody that goes to their religious temples on, the, on their day of worship. So yeah, exoteric meaning outside or the external. So people that read the Bible for the cover story that it is without looking into the deeper or hidden esoteric allegories. So allegory which is something with an underlying message or a deeper moral message. So you know the Bible holds some, some gems of allegorical and esoteric knowledge. It's not, not the cover story. You know? Jesus walking along water, the light of the world, is just, just an allegory. It's, an, it's allegorical. So this uh, getting into the Hermetic tradition, this, this quote here, it's it's a great quote which holds a lot of wisdom inside. I don't think you can put much more wisdom in so fewer words. Heed these words. Those of you who wish to probe the depths of nature, if you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither will you find it outside. In you is hidden the treasure of treasures. Know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods. It's from the Oracle of Delphi in the Greek. So, your thoughts, the, the masculine element, a fulfilment would be knowledge, understanding and wisdom. And that's actually the, the last three parts of the Kabbalah, knowledge, understanding and wisdom. So you'd, you'd need to be in the polarity of love to be able to, to want to seek truth and knowledge. Because if you're in the polarity of fear, you would be in ignorance, you'd ignore knowledge, you don't want to know because it, it brings personal responsibility and, and you want to ignore it. So that's actually a, the polarity of fear. So failure of thought should be ignorance, foolishness and naivety. Fulfillments of your emotion would be true care. It's not just care about yourself, but care about everybody, not just you and your family and you and your friends, but the greater good, the planet, the animals, everybody else empathy and compassion. Failure in your emotional aspect would be apathy, indifference and callousness. So to take right action in the world, it needs courage, it needs willpower and it needs persistence. Those are your fulfillments. Failures would be cowardice, laziness and submission. Going a little bit deeper, this is the first degree tracing board in Freemasonry and it's saying the same allegory. You've got the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine, so strength, masculine attribute, beauty, and you've got wisdom in the middle. This is the checkered board floor known as the floor of the house which represents ignorance and ego ultimately. So you need to get out of ignorance and ego and begin your journey into the light, into enlightenment. Uh, the initiate in the middle, wearing green, symbolising balance. Green is pretty much in the middle of the light, visible light spectrum of red and blue. So you see a lot of green in nature, representing balance. It's why it's very calming, having your walks in nature. 
holding, there's a G there and a key. So the generative principle, the key of being natural law, right? So that's basically, you know, the first degree tracing board in, in Freemasonry. I could talk about this for a long, long time, but I just want to give you an overview. And I want you, this, I'd like this to be a little taster for you guys to, to want to seek this information for yourself and look a little bit deeper into things. So the, the, the tracing board here, the black and white, you'll notice in England, Australia, the black and white checks wrapped around the, the, the crown chakra on the police and military. It's mockery. It's those people don't know right from wrong. They don't care. They're just following orders. They're the, they're the lap dogs of the, 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 the ruling class. And they're their dogs. Attack dog, kill dog. You know? and they wear their dog tags in the, in the military. So I've completely ignored my notes that I've made and I've <laughs> done that ad lib. So that's, we're look, going a little bit deeper now. When you combine these, so you've got the, the chalice and the blade, you've got Solomon's seal of Solomon. Not knowing this information, not knowing do no harm, take no shit, means that you don't use the lost word. No. So those of you who have watched the Matrix movie, um, I would urge you to actually watch Pat Mark Passio's The, the Matrix um, the Decoded. But it's a, it's a hugely from Freemasonic allegory. Uh, no is the biggest word in this presentation, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's the word we must embrace. We must fall in love with this word. And uh, no to the mind control system. Now, no is the most powerful word. Neo gets shot in room 33 in Freemasonry, you've got 33rd degree Freemasons. Well, at 33 degrees, water melts. It turns from ice and it melts into to a liquid. So this is a thawing of the heart. So this would be the activation of care. So Neil gets shot in room 33. So this is like their, their savior figure, Hiram Abiff, who's reborn, the reborn man. The new man, Neo, the new man. So you'd be considered reborn with care and knowledge and the will to take right action. So Neo, new and a son, son of man, the new man. The next stage of human enlightenment or illumination. So when Neo wakes up after dying, the first word he uses is no. No against the state. No to wrong action. So those that don't know right from wrong, won't say no. And they won't speak it. And they'll be afraid to speak it. And that's exactly where they want us to be. So going back to the, the Trinity allegory, the allegory of Christ consciousness, right action born from the unison of the positive aspects of the male and female traits. So most religionists are fake religionists. They don't walk in the footsteps of their saviour. If only they did, that's all I can say. So they externalise and they take the cover story literally. So Jesus was, was against the oppression of the state. He was against the Roman order followers that just were following their orders and put him to his death. He, was the, he whipped the, the money exchange, he whipped the bankers in the temple. He spoke the truth and he encouraged personal responsibility of not being controlled externally. So this is the, the answer collectively, taking right action, living and teaching natural law. So most Christians love the state and they talk of government doing God's work and we should obey, but they're ultimately ignorant, cowardly children. They're not, they're not doing anything to combat evil, they're not standing up to evil like their saviour did. And a great allegorical Bible verse would be, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his, their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. So I don't know 
if that resonates with many of you that have been speaking truth to your friends and family. But it is it's belligerent in nature, but it's uh, controversial. Truth is controversial and belligerent, you know, so con conversare, to come face to face with change. And that's, that's why people don't like it, and they'd rather shoot the messenger. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. He didn't come to bring peace. He's speaking the truth. So even if it means upsetting those closest to you, you must speak it. Even if your voice is shaking, you've still got to speak it. You need that, the courage to do it. And this allegory, that this trinity is, is widely in, 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 our, in our ancient past and our cultures, the Babylonian trinity. Uh, actually, what's quite interesting is when we look at our, the, the two pillars of enlightenment and, and the human brain, the masculine and the feminine attributes of the self, and how we're, we're ultimately divided, they're trying to divide us, right? divide and conquer. But not only are we divided internally, but if you look at the world, largely you've got Islam in the eastern part of the world, Christianity would largely be in the, the western part of the world, and then you'd have Judaism in the middle. So this is as above, so below, you know? So yeah, I mean, it's all there in our face as well. You've got the, the crescent moon symbolism there. And, and, and Islam literally means to submit. So you've got the, the, one of the not so positive aspects of the, the female traits of the submission. You know, to submit, literally submit to God. And then on the solar religion, so the lunar cult and the solar cult, you've got the cross of the zodiac you know, as the sun goes around. You know, the twelve disciples, it's, it's, all, it's all there in our face. The, 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 it's all there, but we, we just don't see it because we're We've told a load of rubbish, basically. So yes, the, the Egyptians were trying to tell us this. The Hindus were trying to tell us this. Scandinavians, Romans. So this, this allegory runs through. We need, just need the eyes to see. There's also some good allegories in movies. Wizard of Oz. Thoughts, actions and emotions on the spiritual journey to truth. In the Batman vs. Superman movie, the Matrix movie, which, yeah, do, do look at that a bit deeper, and like I say, check out Pasio's presentation. This has, this has been occulted, like I say, and then it comprises of two bodies of information about the outer world, or the, the macrocosmic world, the, the greater world, the universe, and the inner world, the self the human psyche, the physical world, and how it operates. But this knowledge is a double-edged blade, and it's the consciousness of the yielder, and it, it's what they decide to do with it. Right? So, you know, the same goes with, with firearms and knives. It's what you decide, to do, the consciousness of the user, and it's the same with knowledge. So the, the people that are controlling us, ruling the planet, are using it for their own benefit. Whereas we need to use it collectively for our collective benefit, right? So the knowledge contained within the occult sciences can be used for the good, the uplifting of human consciousness, or the greater good, which is what magic is. That's magic. Or evil. The manipulation, control, and slavery, or for the benefit of a few, or for an individual, and that's sorcery. So that's the difference between magic and sorcery. So I'd like to think what I'm trying to do here is, is magic. I'm trying to raise human consciousness for, for the greater good. So who are these people then that hold this information and use it against us? They go by many names. Sorcerers. Uh, the, that old religion, Satanism, the dark occult, the cult of the black sun. I could be stood here for hours going to... But do you know, and there are think tank organisations underneath them, the Trilateral Commission, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Tavistock Institute, NASA, MI5, Mossad, Bilderberg, Bohemian Grove, Skull and Bones. You know, but they're, they're, it's all a tightly knit group. And JFK's speech on secret societies, you know, hands up if you've heard that. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's, this is what he's talking about. Last did this presentation, the Westminster Terror Attack, which happened on the 22nd of the 3rd, which is the Skull and Bones. It was also 322 kilometres away from the, the one in Manchester. So, sorry, um, 
Paris, wasn't it? It was Paris and the Westminster. There was 322 kilometres apart. 322. They like, they like to leave these, and, and 9-11's absolutely riddled with it, absolutely riddled with it. Again, I, 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 this is a general overview, and I haven't got time to go into everything. Like I say, my, my presentation series is 14 hours, so I'm really trying to whittle as much condensed information as I can into this one. So a lot of people would say we live in a corporatocracy with all the mega banks and the mega corporations or an oligarchy. Um, I think um, Max Egan's quite close to the mark when he says a cacistocracy, which is ruled by the worst among us, but it's actually an occultocracy. Okay? And it's not a light one, unfortunately. It's a dark one. And that's the Bohemian Grove where the world leaders and the billionaires go to. And they've let us all know how they view the na their natural order of things. So why is this information being used by a few? The true differential between the top of the control pyramid and the bottom is those that know natural law and those that don't. If, we, if, if most people understood natural law, there wouldn't be this control system. So the mono eye, the one eye, phonetic money, right? But I won't touch on that just yet. The mono eye of natural law. And dark occultists have deliberately hidden an occulted natural law and this knowledge to create and maintain that power differential. There are those that hold it and those that are ignorant of it. And dark occultists work through fear and manipulation to bring about obedience with their own selfish will and their work is always done in secrecy, constantly infringing the freedom and prosperity of all but themselves. And we can see this in, in reality. For example, if you go into a bank, you know, you, you go into a bank and you speak to the cashier and you ask them about fractional reserve banking. They're not going to know what it is. They should do. Everyone should do. Uh, Henry Ford said if, if, we all, if everyone knew the secrets of the banking industry, then there'd be a revolution in the morning, or something like that, Henry Ford said. But you go in, and, and they're not going to know anything about fractional reserve banking. Only the people are near the top. But only the people at the very top of any organisation really know what's, what's going on. And, and it's compartmentalised. So the people at the bottom, just, just, they're just compartmentalising their own little job, doing what they do. They don't know what's going on up here, and they don't know what's going on up here. In the army, you've got the same general, five-star general, you know, the, the recruits and the captains don't know what's going on at the top. Travis Walton quote, I've come to realise that the biggest problem anywhere in the world is that people's perception of reality are filtered through the screening mesh of what they want and do not want to be true. Now a lot of things that I might be saying today, you might not want to be true, you might not want to believe it, but that doesn't matter, because truth doesn't care. But I don't want you to take anything I've said here as dogma, I want you, like I say, I want you to do your own research and get your own gnosis on all of this. So reality doesn't work this way and truth doesn't care if, if you want it to be true or not. It doesn't matter what you believe. That solipsism, which I will be getting into in a little bit. So the ruling psychopaths have their beliefs and they act on them and it, it, and it doesn't matter because it affects us. It affects us all. They are Satanists and it does not matter if you believe in Satanism or whether you have an incorrect view on Satanism or not. If, you, if you're imagining a red-horned devil now, it doesn't, it doesn't, that's not what Satanism is. But it's an ideology. And uh, Anton LaVey, who was the high priest, the founder of the Church of Satan, he's talking about the pentagram. He says, in Satanism, the pentagram is also used, but since Satanism represents the carnal instincts of man, or opposite of spiritual nature, the pentagram is inverted to perfectly accommodate the head of the goat, its horns representing duality, thrust upwards in defiance, the other three points inverted, or the trinity denied. So in its pure form, the, the pentagram, which would be the other way up, would represent man in its spiritual nature, the five points of the star, three points up, two down. You have the four elements, earth, air, fire and water, and then spirit at the top. So Satanism's inverting that and it's doing so these are the satanic sins 
which would be a sin for a Satanist, but they would propagate them in society to be able to control. So they propagate their sins to the general population. And their number one sin is stupidity. Pretentiousness, solipsism, self-deceit, herd conformity, lack of perspective, forgetfulness of path or past orthodoxies, counterproductive pride, and lack of aesthetics. Now, I mean, if you go through the... Uh, that's, that perfectly describes society. You know, take, take the top bit off, the satanic sins, you just read down through those. So they've done a pretty good job. They've done a pretty good job. But how does, how does this view? Stupidity, conformity, hedonism, loving of the self, just, just loving yourself. That's really what it's all about. It's about selfishness. So these are the tenets of, self, of, of Satanism. Selfishness is all about me. Whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes for me to get, or our little group to get what we need, what we want. Moral relativism, which is the opposite of objective morality. That's the, object, that's the opposite of natural law. Social Darwinism, which is you know, the, the blue bloods and their right, divine right to rule. This is, that's really uh, the survival of the richest. Social Darwinism, they, they, they think they're so much better than they can rule. And it doesn't matter what they do and, and who dies. And, the, and eugenics, the eugenicists, you know, Bill Gates. Or beyond, it's not really eugenics, it's beyond through mind control and it's dysgenics. So they're not, they're not creating the, 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 the positive traits that, that we want in humanity. They're dumbing us down to create the worst traits that they want so we're easily farmed. So this is an important section coming up. Reality, check ahead. So the reality, our, our reality. And in the building blocks of reality, the first building block would be knowledge or lack of. So the, the available information, the potential knowledge that can be processed or understood and acted upon by the individual. So everything starts with mind. The all is mind. The universe is mental. That knowledge will lead to an understanding or a lack of, which is the decision-making part. So what you do with this information, what you do with this knowledge leads to your decision making, and what, what, which then leads to wisdom or lack of, which is the human behaviour. Each individual's actions is an outcome of their decision making, which collectively leads to our manifested reality. So collectively we're creating reality by all of our actions put together. And it starts from here. So we're not just, we're not just controlled physically with, by the threat of violence from the police, but we, they, you control the input, you control the output, right? Rubbish in, rubbish out. So, I mean, we're very much, very much like computers. You know, I related to computers earlier with uh, the malware, the natural law being a, a virus and malware cleanup. The humans are programmable, we're totally programmable. <laughs> that's why it's called TV programming, right? So they know this, and that's why. We, so we're not only controlled physically, but we're controlled through the mind as well. So they control the schools, they control the curriculum and the colleges. You need to look into the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, they own the medical and schooling curriculum. So they, they're controlling the input, you see. And then where people adhere to the religion of authority or the religion of science and ignore the truths, and they, they get, they're getting their manifested reality. So a good book to look at would be the Rockefeller Medicine Men. And, and so things like natural law is occulted. Uh, Tesla's occulted, fractional reserve banking is occulted, hemp uses are occulted, and all of these things are obfuscated and omitted. So this is limiting human imagination or the conception of what is possible. So you're controlling the mind, you're controlling the, the, the imagination, and which is the key to the philosopher, <laughs> get my words out, the, the philosopher's stone. Imagination what is the key. The, the, the Rock, Rockefeller medicine men. men. Yeah. So reality is a quantum construct, a quantum construct of our collective actions or inactions. So we all play a part of the manifested reality. 
Now, are you just a bystander in this reality, or are you going to get on the are you going to get on the playing field? You're just going to sit here and watch the movie. You're going to get involved. So, we need to understand this. But here's the here's the kicker, which <laughs> which is why ignorance isn't a right. So, all these people that want to remain ignorant, they don't. Then you don't actually have the right to remain ignorant because it's collectively causing harm. And it's kind of quite a hard one for people to get that. You don't have the right to be ignorant, not when it causes harm. So incorrect beliefs are not rights. Apathy and cowardice aren't rights because they're, they're all a part to play in building this reality. And some of us want freedom. And, and your, people's ignorance is taking the freedoms away. So we have the obligation not to cause harm and humans being gifted with the neocortex, which enables us higher order thinking, and gives us things like philosophy and space travel, we should be working towards the evolution and betterment of humanity, and as guardians and gatekeepers of our planet and our fellow earthlings, but we are not. We're ignorantly, cowardly, and apathet apathetic people, and we're allowing our planet to be raped, pillaged, and our, all of the earthlings are suffering. So th does that make sense? How our reality is built? Yeah, good. It, it is love alone that leads to right action. What brings order in the world is to love and let love do what it will. And, and when, we, when we talk about love, some people may have different interpretations of it. But let's look at the Greeks who had four different meanings for it. There was the agape love. So this is what, what I'm talking about, agape love, the expansive love, the love of good, the love of righteousness and charitable deeds. Eros, which was the sexual kind of love. Philea, which is more of a friendship, uh, brotherly love. And then you've got storge love, which is more of an affection between children and parents. But Krishnamurti is talking about the agape love here. And, you know, I mentioned earlier about fulfillment and failure and the polarity of, of being in of either love or fear. So these are some natural law expressions. And... If we are in the positive polarity of love, it will ultimately lead to order or goodness. And how we get there, again, like the building blocks of reality, you, you, you can't go from here to there. There has to be, you're either in this one or you're in this one. So if you're in the polarity of love and you, you're, you're consciousness, you're seeking truth, that will lead to knowledge. And that knowledge is what I'm talking about today would lead to sovereignty or internal monarchy. So we want internal dominion. We want internal control. The only people, the only person you want to control is yourself. Be, be the master, the kingdom of self. Population one. Which leads to freedom, collectively, right? If we're all just controlling ourselves and we're not doing harm, it leads to freedom, which is external anarchy or order and good. But through mind control and ignorance, we're collectively in this polarity, so we're largely unconscious, we're in the polarity of fear, and we're ignoring this, this information, which leads to confusion. And if you've not got internal monarchy, you're gonna have internal anarchy, you're not in control, so you're gonna be controlled externally. So that's why we've got an external control system which is bad, <laughs> we're living in chaos, not good, <laughs> all right, okay, but there are two ways to be fooled, one is to believe what is not true, and the other is to refuse to accept what is true, so it doesn't, again, it doesn't really matter if you, what you believe, if you, you, you're being fooled if you want to refuse the truth, okay, so natural law is basically, it's truth and morality. And truth exists, okay? There is such a thing as objective morality. And because truth and morality not only oppose government, but they oppose authority, they oppose mind control, religion, scientism, culture, society. As I've come to realize this, I've come to realize that truth is actually antisocial. It goes against lifelong born belief systems. It's belligerent, it's confrontational, 
to cut through the facades and lies which are prevalent in society. We can see that both truth and morality are virtually non-existent in the world, so let's look at the two opposers of them. The main opposer of truth is solipsism, and the opposer of objective morality is moral relativism, which most people have bought into. So solipsism is heavily propagated by Satanists. Uh, it's a massive part of the new cage religion, sorry, the new age religion. And there are lots and lots of solipsists out there. It's a very dangerous notion. So it's basically an ego-inflated notion that only one's own mind is sure to exist. This is a dictionary definition. Only one's own mind exists. So expanding on that, a solipsist would contend that perception is different from reality and everything is subjective to the individual. And reality is not objective. It's all relative, it's all subjective. So this is essentially playing God. If you think you can pick and choose what truth is and what reality is, you're essentially playing God. And there's a lot, there's a lot of people in the New Age religion, like I said, that, that think they're God. This is the enemy of knowledge and truth. You'll never set out on the path to truth if you don't believe that it can be known. And that's why it's propagated. That's why, you know, they, they think they can be all love and light and meditate and reach enlightenment and stay ignorant. It's not going to happen. So solipsism is a mental illness. You know, you basically think you're God. And this is an out-of-control ignorance. This is fear-based. It's being unable to see the world for what it really is unable to accept truth. This is spiritual infancy. Uh, you know, I often hear along the lines of, we're just molecules floating around in an infinite universe, an ever-expanding universe. How can we ever possibly know? Uh, Solipsism is the main opposer of truth. As I said, that's the dictionary definition. So the, elaborating on it means everything is subjective to the observer and there's no definitive truth. Well, you know, is math subjective or relative? You know, does 2 plus 2 equals 4? Or does it matter if you, if you th think it equals 3 and I think it equals 5? Oh, that's all fine, that's great, you know, that's wonderful, excellent. It's all relative. Well, actually, no. <laughs> it equals 4, you're an idiot. So, um, it is, you know, reality. Truth is, it's unwavering. It is what is, it's what's happened, it's what's happening. Regardless of individual opinion, and the word solipsism comes from the latin solo which means alone by oneself so yes i've mentioned that solipsism is actually a satanic sin so that they propagate it but they know that truth exists so they they wouldn't they wouldn't be solipsists and the cure for this method of thinking uh, is called the trivium so it's a method of thinking to find truth and knowledge and this is really important this is this is called the threefold path to truth and wisdom. And I understand in the times of Caesar, if you were caught teaching this to the peasants, then you'd be killed. So the trivium, try three, the threefold path to truth and wisdom. And it's basically on the, the subject matter you want to accumulate as much information on the subject matter as you can. So you input you do your grammar, and this answers the who, why, where, or what. So you get as much information on the subject, excuse me, on the subject matter from as, very, as many different sources as you can. So once you've got that information, you process it, you understand, you do your logic. So this enables us to understand the why, the reason, the purpose. So you remove all the inconsistencies and you take out what cannot be true. And then what you're left with is knowledge, wisdom, if you apply it. And the fulfillment of that, very similar, would be prosperity, good and order. You know, but failures of the trivium, again, you're not even doing your homework. You're not even looking into anything. If you don't process it properly, you're going to be confused, you don't understand it. Then you get the external control. And in society, you've either got the, these, these words, you would have austerity or prosperity. You know, it's either entropy or prosperity, good or bad, evil, goodness, you know. This goes alongside the quadrivium, 
So the quadrivium, this used to get taught in our schools. So this would be the four, the classic liberal arts. Geometry, maths, music and cosmology. So you've got the three and the four, and that adds up to the magic seven, which are the septenarian, so, you know, the um, seven visible planets, seven days of the week, seven chakras, seven endocrine systems, it's on and on. But this is where we should go back to this, you know, because this creates people that can critically think and that are balanced brains. So you, you basically this is, you know, if you're teaching all the kids this, you're going to get more geniuses. And that's, that's what exactly what they don't want, because their geniuses aren't very compliant workers in the, in the machine plant, are they? You know, this is uh, knowing how to think and come to truth with the trivium, combined with the four liberal arts, you get critical thinking skills and an understanding of reality and a balanced brain, which is why it's not taught anymore. So that's how we get to know truth. We apply the trivium. And truth exists. You know, and, and, and if new information comes along that's true, then I would, I would have to shed my previous gnosis because there's, n there's more. But in, in, the current, cur in the current human condition, in, in today's world, where we are now, you know, this is the information that I've come to understand. This is knowledge. But if new information comes along, it would supersede this. I wouldn't be rigid. With, with that. So that's uh, truth and uh, how, how we come to truth with the, with the quadrivium and the trivium. So that's how we combat solipsism and how we combat moral relativism would, would be object, the gnosis of objective morality. So the opposer of morality is moral relativism. And so we are taught right from the outset to respect authority and their laws. We never really truly know the objective difference between right and wrong behaviour. We're, so we're easily led astray. So moral relativism is the lie we've been sold that morals, right and wrong, can change, say, either side of an imaginary line. So lines and borders, you know, counties and states, laws should be what is moral and right. So whether we cross an imaginary line or a border, it should, right and wrong shouldn't change at all. So it's, it's absolutely crazy to think that we give power to legislators that they can just write down on a piece of paper what is right and what is wrong. And these rules only ever benefit the people that are writing them. So something's either right or wrong regardless of these imaginary lines or borders. You know... They, with the rubber stamping with their magic stamp doesn't just make it lawful or right. Something doesn't just become magically moral from crossing an imaginary line. This is mind control. Coercion as well. Through vi with violence, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're all born into this realm, flesh and blood. Nobody else makes it out alive. We all have the same rights. If something causes harm or loss of property rights to another living being, then it is wrong. Everything else is a right. Just, and just if you take this one thing today and apply it to your life, that's what enlightenment is. It's knowing the objective difference between right and wrong and living accordingly. It's not being able to meditate and levitate, you know, and any do all the funky stuff like that. It's just simply just knowing right from wrong. It's the allegorical Jesus, you know. Yeah, moral relativism's... Not, and the thing with moral relativism is that all the whilst, this is the big thing, really, all the whilst we embrace moral relativism and we don't align to objective morality, we're never going to be free. You know, that's really where it is, that's where it's at. All the whilst we don't know right from wrong, we're never going to be free. You know, objective morality is based upon the principles that we understand right from wrong, that are inherent to creation. We harmonise with them through the knowledge and understanding. Whereas man's law, as Alan said, they're complied with due to fear of punishment. These natural laws are universal and then they apply everywhere and exist everywhere in the universe. Whereas man's law differs from location based upon the whim of the legislator. These are eternal and immutable and they apply for as long as the universe exists. And they cannot be changed. Cannot change the fact that theft is wrong. It's always gonna be wrong 
no matter, you're never going to be able to justify it. Okay. So man's law, going on to man's laws, you know, taxation is theft. However we want to look at it, taxation is theft. If you don't want to accept that, then you're lying to yourself. Again, the truth doesn't care. But on this path, we need to stop lying to ourselves. That's the first step on this, come out of cognitive dissonance. Licenses and permits are slavery. We've got the right to do whatever we want if it doesn't cause harm. We shouldn't be having masters telling us we've got the right to do and, and pay them for the privilege. Prohibition is a claim of ownership of the individual and their consciousness. You own your bodies. No one else owns that body. I own this body. It's up to me what I put in it. So the very fact that someone else can claim an ownership of your body by saying you, 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 you can't put that in, you can only put these, these substances that we allow you in. These ones, you know, no, they're definitely not allowed this. It's, it's mind control and it's, sl it's slavery. Claim of ownership of the body. And, and whilst we're on prohibition, you know, the, the very fact that the drug of choice in the current human condition is alcohol, so this is a, 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 a chart by Professor Dr. Nutt, who got sacked for speaking the truth. But he had the courage to do it, so right on Dr. Nutt. So this is a chart, and this basically shows overall harms caused by drugs to the user and society. So alcohol is the most harmful drug to the user and society, yet, like I say, it's the drug of choice. Mushrooms are the least harmful to the user in society, and they're illegal. Okay, again, we've got LSD down there. I'm quite surprised to see cannabis up here being so, so harmful to a user in society. But, you know, it says it, that says it all. The very fact you've got alcohol up there and mushrooms down there, and the fact that I've talked about Satanism and the invertedness, right? It's very upside down, don't you think? And there's, um, there's, a, there's a very good quote uh, I'm probably going to butcher it now, but it talks about, you know, doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, education destroys you know, knowledge, yet, yeah, you know. We've got a satanic system. It's been flipped over. That's why. That's, that's why. Um, but, you know, and hemp can save the world. And, you know, I've got, I've got, I'm very passionate about this. And, and hemp, you know, if you look into it, I'd recommend you read Jack Hera's book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. He basically devoted 20 odd years of his life compiling this book. And it, it speaks volumes. But it, hemp can replace fuel, paper, housing, nutrition, textiles, food, and oil. We can literally stop drilling the planet, chopping down all the trees and all the plastic pollutions, or half of pharmaceutical drugs could be made redundant but you know all of those industries I've mentioned are old money there's a lot of old money there big old money families and that's why because a very small group of people want to remain in control and in power Jack Hera says I don't know if hemp I don't know if hemp is going to save the world but it's the only thing that can I'd go one step further than that and say hemp can save the world but human slavery must end first. We're never going to be able to fully utilise any technology, let alone something which has been put here for our benefit, so we can live alongside nature. You know, it's the world's number one renewable resource, hands down. But we, we, need, to, we need to step out of human slavery, unfortunately. Um, so... You know, hemp, you can live on hemp. You know, so if, if, if the world was allowed to grow it, there wouldn't be the, the nutritional deficiencies and the malnourishment and all the starvation. Because you can literally live on hemp seed. And not many people know that either. So the, the, literally the most nutritious plant um, product on the planet, not many people know that. <laughs> yeah, you can live on the stuff. Um, it's the staple food for the centenarian hotspots in the world. So a centenarian hotspot would be someone somewhere which average age is over 100. So hemp seed is a big part of those centenarian hotspots. 
So you've got all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the proteins. You've got a perfect ratio of omega-3, 6, and 9. Um, an example, in nature, if, if birds have access to hemp seed, then they're a lot healthier. They have um, more shinier plumage. And they use hemp seed in songbird competitions. The songbirds sing more songs eating hemp seed. It's a little of a little random bit of information. So, you know, following on from, from prohibition and the fact that we're not allowed to put certain things in because our masters won't allow it, and we'll get beaten up and put in a cell if we do. Entheogens. This is something we do want to be putting in our body. And entheogens and psychedelics get their names for good reason. So this is, this is the MT in the background. Um, so yeah, do drugs, guys. Right, especially psychedelics and entheogens. But you know, I would put a caveat on it. It's not they're not recreational. They're they're here for they're plant teachers. They're here for our, us to use consciously and responsibly to create the divine within. Entheogenare. Psyche de lune to make the mind clear make the, ma the mind sane, to sanitise, right? And I can test, personally testify <laughs> that psychedelics have hugely helped me in my personal growth, uh, not just taking this information on, but changing myself, applying the information, right? So why is change difficult? Most people spend a great deal of their day unconsciously feeling and thinking from past memories. They do this because they have hardwired those experiences by repeatedly thinking of them and by associating many of them ex the experiences with them. So it makes sense that if most people maintain the same environment for long periods of their lives where nothing new is happening or there is no change, the repeated stimuli will therefore produce the reactivation of associative neural networks, which will become more developed, strengthened and refined. So as a consequence of a lack of no novelty in their environment and experiences, they have become hardwired to their own worlds. No wonder change is so difficult, right? So the thing with psychedelics, and again, do your own research, both you know, with the information, but research them by taking them. <laughs> they actually break down the, the neural pathways that have built up addiction addictions. So they break down addiction pathways in the brain. They f help forge new ones. So if, if you want to apply information and, and you want to change, psychedelics are, are the perfect thing to help you achieve that. And whether you're doing them in small microdoses or in large, what Terence McKenna would call um, heroic doses, uh, the uh, five grams of in silent darkness. And good luck, you know, you, you will be reborn and you'll come back humble. <laughs> but they, they still have the benefits either way, you know. So here's a, a picture of, of, of some, which I'd encourage you to break the law in, in, in using consciously. So yeah, so know, these are plant teachers and know your own, your own body and consciousness. So, methods of manipulation. So we're, we're manipulated in numerous ways. And, and I... Again, I, I don't have the time to go through them all in detail today, so I, I need you to look, you know, look into them for yourselves. Obfuscation, which is rendering unclear. So you'd, you'd have uh, an obscured pane of glass. You can't quite see through it clearly. So they obfuscate things like hemp, which is when um, the big old money corporations, uh, so the DuPont family, invented nylon and uh, a, a chemical to put in their paints at the same time as a decorticating machine was invented for the hemp. So they had to, they had to demonize hemp because it was a big threat to the, the logging, the cotton, the, um, the, the big money industry, the oil industries. So they obfuscated it. They, you know, the, um, the lazy Mexicans and the raping niggers, you know, you're it's the gateway drug and all of the other crap that they, they put alongside it. So that's one of the techniques, obfuscation. You'd have world view poisoning. You know, there are too many humans. It's always been this way. Uh, human nature is inherently evil. You know, all this sort of stuff. They will play on our primal fears. 
the divide and conquer technique, indoctrination, controlled opposition, religion, submersive, submer <laughs> subversive symbolism, the financial system, the control of mass media, food and medicine, the illusion of time, denial, hassle, ridicule factor, chaos, sorcery, stroke, problem, reaction, solution, and false flags, and words. So I, I can't go into all those for the time rest restraints. I have gone into them in my other presentations though, but I'm going to look at words today. Government. Does anyone know what that breaks down to, what the meaning of that is? What it really means? Mind control, is it? Yes, mate. Gubernare mentis, to control the mind. Anarchy, I covered, without, ru without rulers. And, you know, again, that associative obfuscation with that word, they want us to think that it means chaos. And this shows that it's perfect mind control because most people think anarchy is chaos. Most people think freedom is chaos. Perfect mind control. Another word which is misused, apocalypse, of related to you know, the, the destruction of the planet. It actually means the unveiling of truth. Occult just means hidden knowledge, but it's associated with dangerous things, devil worship and that type of stuff. The word intelligent is misused. That actually, love this word. You've got the masculine intel, the sacred masculine, and the sacred feminine gents genare. So when you apply intellect and care, the births, the one eye, the neocortex is, is engaged and the eye in the middle comes on. Intelligent, right? Intel eye gent. Conspiracy literally means to breathe together. Spiro, spirare, and con. Con means together, to breathe. Illusion. So... My notes are gone, never mind. Um, ill, us, I, on. So together we are ill, our I is not on. <laughs> We're living an illusion outside of natural law. A solvent. Vitriolic speech can be a solvent. Soul, the light, to vent. Vitriolic speech. You're literally speaking the light and truth. You're venting. It's the solvent. It breaks down. It breaks down egos. It breaks down untruths. It breaks down God dogma, you know? Which can bring, bring sanity. Um, to make sane. The, I, I mentioned about... Oh, <laughs> to sanitise the mind. Uh, excuse me, my notes have gone, so I've, and I haven't done this presentation in a year, so bear with me. These two words mean very similar. So you've got, you've got tain, um, n within, and mind, mens mentis, mind. Again, you've got mens mentis, mind. But amuse air, I think that means to stare stupidly. So basically, you know, amusement arcades um, and things like that, any amusements, you get, you're controlling the mind by getting people to stare stupidly and holding the mind back from what's really going on. So the, the things that are really going on in the world and knowledge of natural law, that's why there's so much entertainment. That's why there's so much amusement. You know, it's the old Roman circus. You know, when the plebs are discontent, hold a gladiatorial event. You know? Getting a little bit right-brained, a little bit green language, it's a little bit out there, so just bear with me. But you know I was talking about the black and white checkerboard floor and how it represents uh, ego and ignorance, but the right and wrong. Well, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not coming out of ego and ignorance and going on your journey, then you're forever going to wander on the floor of the house. You're going to forever wander in and out of light and dark and never really know the objective difference. So these police, and you've got the poles, yeah, and in Freemasonry we had the pillars. So we're, ne we're not going to climb the, the, the poles of enlightenment if they're icy, if they're kept icy. The pole ice, off-eye seers. 
police officers. <laughs> they're off. Their one eye is not on. So that they're, they're, you know, I can't really explain it much <laughs> more than that. But they're in the military, so that their, their light is awry. They 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 aren't balanced. They haven't come into true notice of right and wrong and living. They they're in the military. They're out there following orders. They're not engaging their own consciousness. Their light is awry. Soldiers with dog tags, soul dire. It's literally there, the death of the soul. Right? So it's a little bit out there, but they love using this sort of language to mock us. Money. Mono I. So instead of, which is knowledge, right? Light. The, you know, the, the one eye symbol. That's what it means. Light and knowledge and truth. We are chasing fake mono eye. Most humans spend most of their time and energy chasing paper, money, and digits on a screen. It doesn't exist. It's not real. It's a religion. But because most people believe, that's why it works. It's, you know, it, but we, we, collectively, we can't do much about it. But as long as we understand, as long as we know that it's not real, right? But we, we all need these paper slave tokens to exist in the current human dynamic. But that, yeah, it's a proxy. So, you know, rather than putting all our energy into, into good and natural law and knowledge, we're chasing an illusion again. I can't remember what I was going to talk about liberty. I'm really sorry. Uh, mortgage, death chain. And I mentioned psychedelic and entigens anyway. So... Again, this consciousness, you know, and right from wrong should be common knowledge. I mean, looking at the word apocalypse, but we are actually in the zombie apocalypse right now. Because going, talking about the three aspects of consciousness, our thoughts, actions, and emotions, they are largely dead in most people. Most people don't care for truth and knowledge. They don't have that true care about the, the greater good and the planet so they're cons and, and this is how, unfortunately, this is how the ruling elite see most, most of us as the dead. Yes, liberty. Okay, I found my notes. Sorry, I say it's been a while since I've done this. The Greeks had the same word for liberty as they did freedom and books. So they, liber, in books and freedom, the same word. But we don't have that because we are sick as co a collective society, unfortunately. It is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And we are sick because we are profoundly a satanic society, unfortunately. And we've bought into these religious beliefs. Religion itself, the cultural religions. Money as a religion. Scientism as a religion. Like I mentioned before where you've got doctors... Um, ignoring things about uh, fluoride or um, you know, vaccines, you know, all the adjuvants and uh, all everything that's in, in vaccines. And you'd have dentists ignoring things about mercury and fluoride. So this is a religion now because you're not actually accepting things which are truth. You're, not, you're, you're ignoring that because it doesn't fit the, the mainstream paradigm. Carnism's a religion. The belief on, on eating animals. Uh, the right, the same as the religion of authoritarianism, the right to dominate, the right to rule. Uh, Carnism is the, the belief that we somehow morally entitled to or we, somehow necessary to, to take the lives of animals. It's a religion. They're both dominating religions. And religion comes from the Latin religare, to hold back, to thwart from forward progress. So because we don't know natural law and we've bought into these religions, we are being held back. And I'd actually say, because the true meaning of the word retarded means to be slowed down, right? So there's not much difference between religion and being retarded. Now, obviously, with the connotation, when you say retarded, people will get offended. But you, so if you use it properly. But yeah, you, you're, you're buying into dogma. You're being slowed down. You've been held back. 
So these religions are collectively holding us back from true evolution and positive change where we want to get to this place of order in society. So I mentioned money, false religion, a belief-based system of control built upon the fear of scarcity and purposely designed to limit access to energy. And I mentioned the mono eye. And in, uh, in America, like, all of their bills are green. So this is, again, the play on nature and balance. Just, it's, a, it's a proxy. Scientism, you know, they're basically educated, indoctrinated idiots. But they'd say, I'm sceptical of everything unless the government or government-funded scientists say it's true. Then I'm a true believer. Ignorant to truths. You know, my dentists believe that mercury was fine to have in the human body and sodium fluoride was beneficial. And our last conversation was when he researched medical marijuana and decided to believe, he actually said, I believe it has no medical benefit. That was my last conversation with him. Because uh, I'd just about had it up to there by that point. But this is typical of ignorant, fearful of taking personal responsibility, self-loathing, cowardly worshippers of scientism, as it's easier than thinking for themselves. Now, the definition of an idiot is someone who doesn't know their own profession, or someone that doesn't know thyself. It would be an esoteric take on an idiot. So that someone that doesn't know the objective difference between right and wrong is an idiot. Most dentists are idiots. <laughs> Most doctors are idiots. Most people in banks are idiots. Unfortunately, we've, we've got a lot of them around. Um, yeah. So going through the religions, that was scientism. And we're going to be looking at carnism. And this is a classic picture for a carnist. They love animals, don't they? Don't they just love them so much? Right? And this guy nails it for me, because this is where I, I personally feel I need to try and get people's understanding at. Because I know, I know I mentioned about moral relativism and that all the whilst we're enshrining moral relativism, we're never going to be free, because that's the law of morality. And as morality increases, as there's freedom, and as morality declines, as there's freedom. But the law of correspondence, especially with regards to animals, you know, Leo nails it. All, all the whilst there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. As above, so below. And we'd be very, very naive to think that we can go, carry along slaughtering billions of sentient beings every year, thinking we're going to get freedom. The universe isn't going to give it to us. It's just not going to happen. Pythagoras knew a thing or two about a thing or two. He said, as long as men massacre animals, they will kill each other. Indeed, he who sows the seeds of murder and pain cannot reap the joy of love. You know, to be in that polarity of love, again, the agape love, the expansive love, to get to order. Love of all things good. I've, you know, I could, I could bring up Tesla quotes, Da Vinci quotes, Gandhi and Buddha quotes about carnism. Uh, I'll leave it there because those were those are good enough. So carnists love animals. So as, as as controversial as a lot of this information's already been, and again contra to come face to face with the Sare change. Carnism is a religion based entirely in violence, saying it's somehow necessary and or morally justifiable to consume dead animal flesh. A religion in the true sense of the word from the Latin religare to hold back. This is the land of cognitive dissonance. Lying to yourself, enshrined in moral relativism. A society that embraces moral relativism will never be free. Just, just so say it one more time. So four natural laws that apply to carnism. You've got the law of freedom, where I mentioned freedom and morality are directly proportionate, when it's obviously more moral not to kill beings when you don't need to. The law of assimilation. You are what you eat. Do you eat dead, rotting flesh and pus-laden, antibiotic-laden, growth hormone-laden and fear-laden dairy? 
is a demonstrable fact that humans are healthier on an eclectic, organic, plant-based diet manifesting less disease and increased vitality. You are what you eat. Everything you put in your body turns into you. And I, the number seven comes up again. In a seven year cycle, you've renewed every single cell in your body. So I haven't actually been vegan for seven years or an all day, so I've still not fully renewed myself, I feel. Law of correspondence, this is again, which to me is the big one, as above, so below. We cannot be free whilst we are necessarily slave and butcher our fellow earthlings. But the big one, don't steal. Natural law, right? The one, one law, don't steal. It's wrong to cause harm to other living beings. Animals' lives aren't our lives to take. So it's always going to be wrong. So veganism, a lot of people, when you say vegan or veganism, a lot of people have an incorrect connotation. And would, you know, like through sitcoms like Friends, we've got... Phoebe, the vegetarian who's always getting mocked. He's, she's the funny one, the quirky one. When you say veganism, a lot of people associate it with like tree huggy, hippie type people, you know, but or in a religious aspect as well. But it's not. It's morality. It's respect for our fellow earthlings. It's acknowledgement for our interconnectivity. It's also respect for self by putting in the highest quality nutrients. Obviously, if you had to take another animal's life to save your own or to save someone else's in your presence, that's okay. Because that's, that's an understanding of the non-aggression principle, the, the take no shit, right? If you're getting attacked by an animal, you don't just lie down and let it maul you. You would, you'd do something about it. So that's, the, again, the, the pillars of enlightenment. So it is not necessary, it's key word, it's not necessary to consume meat and dairy. It, and I'd go as far as saying it does make you a bad person because it's not necessary and it's causing suffering. You're supporting the suffering and slaughter of living beings. So when I said what are you prepared to do to change, what are you prepared to do for freedom, this could be the biggest and easiest thing to do. Remember the Buddha quote, there's only two mistakes on the path to truth to know. So two mistakes on the path to truth. And to know and not to to do is to really not know or care. So, you know, again, as above, so below. We're, we're enslaving these beings through the religion of carnism. We're being enslaved through the religion of authoritarianism or statism. And it is a religion because they've got their sacred symbols and texts, they've got their crusades, they've got their deities and their human sacrifice. They've got their temples and monuments. They've got their mystic rituals and their common prayer. So we, we need to stop supporting domination of uh, other beings as well as humans. And order followers need to quit their cults. So police and military are the enforcers and the builders of the dark new world order. I've, I've used the um, Help for Heroes stuff here deliberately on purpose because this is what it really should say. This is what it really should say. So the Help for Heroes is a PSYOP. So it's, it's getting you to, using NLP and your emotions to, to feel sorry for these poor heroes that are defending our freedoms. You know, we support these, these people. But they're order followers, they're cult members. They're upholding a state of slavery. They're killers. So, you know, the, the Help for Heroes glorifies unthinking, murderous, automaton post-humans into being white knights. This feeds the Stockholm Syndrome and perpetuates the dominator mindset and culture. So no order can come from a system that's based in control and violence. Again, with regards to carnism and authoritarianism. So when you say a cult, people might have the, a slightly obscured variant on that word. You know, bubble wrap suits and funny symbols, I don't know. But a cult, they, they use the same techniques and induction techniques the world over. And this is why the police and military are cult members, because they're isolated. So the technique of isolation in their barracks and their social cliques. There's uniformity. So they're all made to look the same. Uniforms, uni, one, one form. They're all made to look the same. Same haircuts. 
They go through physical and mental trauma. They're broken down and beaten down and built back into an automaton, right? They go through indoctrination through repetition with their marching and their songs. And there's a them versus us mentality, you know, squaddies and civvies. They're fed high carb diets and low nutrient dense food to starve the higher brain of vital nutrition to help keep the reptilian brain, the fight or flight, high, hive mind or the following complex, the primary control system. So lots of pastas, potatoes, noodles, and very little fruit, veg and nuts. So these are cult techniques. And schools share some of those techniques. Not as many as the police and military. But you know, they're break, breaking people down. So what do we what do we call uh, an animal, a horse that's that's been that, that accepts its master? What do we say? It's been broken in. It's been broken, yeah. And most humans have been broken in to accept this. So you know, they they go on about raising awareness for post traumatic stress disorder, but why don't we raise awareness to not join a cult in the first place? So kids don't sign up to cults, don't go and serve evil, and end up wanting to kill themselves. Why don't we get order followers to quit so they don't take wrong, ac wrong action and want to kill themselves? Why don't family members stop supporting them? Why don't spouses threaten and be prepared to leave them if they, if they don't quit their immoral jobs? You know, this is where we need to get, we need to, get to this kind of level. Um, a paycheck isn't the most important thing. Right action is. And as the Nuremberg troll concluded, you cannot usurp personal responsibility. All beings are responsible for their actions. And all order followers are bad people. Bad people, by definition, because they're not engaging their own consciousness. Um, yeah, I'm not going to bother them. They're bad people because they're not engaging their own consciousness. They're not processing whether it's right or wrong and then using their own mind to, to, to take the right action. They're just following their orders. So whether, it, whether even it's a good order or a bad order, they're not engaging. So being an order follower, you're, you're a bad person. You're a bad person if you're an order follower. <coughs> and the, you know, the police and military, it's a very hard truth, again, a hard truth to accept, but that's the case. And a lot of people wouldn't want to accept that because they might know, oh, my dad was in the police or, oh, Uncle Fred was in the army, you know, he served in NAM or World War II or whatever. So you've got a familial, you know, you know that person in, on a familial basis. You have breakfast with them and you, you, you don't want to see your dad or your family member as being a bad person. But, you know, the truth is, is what it is. Good people don't do bad things. You know, and, 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 and a policeman would just you know, go and, it, I'll my next door neighbor's smoking a joint, right? So they'll, they'll turn up, kick down the door. That person's not done anything wrong. He's not caused any harm. He's not stolen anything. Order follows would go in there, violate his rights, kidnap him, you know? That's not, good people don't, wouldn't do that. So cult members want to relinquish their personal responsibility and be part of a herd group you know, order followers are happy to take away rights and impose suffering upon others. Good people don't do that. You know, are, they, are these people stuck in the abuse victim cycle maybe? You know, are they repressing something? Because I know that there's a lot of repressed homosexuality in the police and military. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if, it's been, if they're repressing it, then they're taking it out on other people. Then there's something wrong with it, right? You know, these are house slaves. They've sold out for a paycheck. And it's rooted in psychological issues. And most of these people don't even know how they're being mocked through the, the black and white around their heads and their dog tags. Um, being, you know, it's, it's a bit too far for them to go. They're, they're, the police as well, another thing I didn't mention, they're polarised. So po wordplay, polarised because the, the red and the blue... So not only are they dominators, but they're also submissive. So they're in the, the, the masculine red element of dominating others th through following orders most of the time, they're dominating others. But then they're also submissive because they're, they're the ones that are following the orders. So they're polarized themselves, polarized. Yeah. So this is the one true divide in humans whether you support domination, 
of humans or animals or not. You're either a dominator or you're an anarchist. This is the one true divide in humanity. So we mustn't support the dominator culture. Neither authoritarianism or carnism. So this is the as above so below, you see? Religions of domination. And Buddha would say, blessed are they who earn their livelihood without harming others. So with regards to quitting your cult. So basically when people start quitting any and all government organisations, then we've got an awakening going on. And a lot of people would say, oh yeah, we're waking up. I don't see that happening. I, I, I think people might be getting little snippets, but you know, for as a, uh, this is the, the level we need. People need to stop quitting their cults and stop quitting their government roles in all of the government bodies, all of the government bodies. I mean, I do see, because the veganism movement's really taken off, whether it's through, uh, uh, whether it's a fad or for popularism, but it, it, nevertheless, it's more moral. So it's a, it's a good thing that's happening there. Uh, but I don't see it happening with regards to authority and, and the government. So this would be the fear-based control pyramid. Belief, money and religion are upheld by order followers. And then you've got the subservient wage slaves at the bottom. And this is all ego, ego-based. You know, aren't I so great? Worship me. It doesn't matter, right, who these people are at the top the 0.001%, because if these people were taken out, we'd still have people willing to take their place in the current human dynamic. You know, and then those people, again, the, the dominator culture, those who wish to manip, to control other people. The, you've got those that know how to manipulate minds and are motivated through their psychopathy and desire to control, will return to the top of the pyramid, and those that have not developed internal dominion or knowledge of mind control techniques will serve and suffer under. So yeah, it doesn't matter, we could take them all out, but we'll, we'll just be back to the square one. We could have a revolution, but we'll be back to square one because we've not dealt with the, the very first slide I showed, you know. That human slavery is the problem, natural law is the solution. Until we, we get to that stage, it doesn't matter what we do. Politics, monetary reform, revolutions, taking out the elite, we're just gonna get back there because we've not dealt with the causal factor, right? And this, you know, this is played through allegories in movies, the same. And the rebels, are we the rebels? Are we gonna, or are we going to support the empire? Cops, copies, clones, copies, cop-outs, and more wordplay. So this is the fear-based control. We're confused emotionally. We're in fear. We're getting controlled because we're in ignorance. This would be where we want to be at to achieve good and order through knowledge, to have internal dominion of self and the polarity of love. So this is where we need to get to. And I'm gonna buzz through these quick. I'm not gonna go into all of them because I'm running low on time. So solutions then, solution-based. We need to know right from wrong and live accordingly. We need to increase the quality of input and I'll, that's what I'm going on to next. The conscious use of entheogens, which I've talked about, we need to learn how to think by using the trivium and quadrivium. We need to stop lying, especially to ourselves, and existing in cognitive dissonance. We need to balance the brain hemispheres and align our thoughts, actions, and emotions. We need to not support dominators. To heal our worldview. So going back to poisoned worldviews. We need mindfulness of present moment awareness and to stay grounded and focus on the solution, which is what, this is natural law. To, in a view to end human slavery and we need to be teaching others. So we need to increase the quality of input. Like what I said, what you eat is literally what you eat, but what you put in your mind as well. So, you know, do we read this crap? I, I did pick these two on purpose because we've got Harry the Nazi and Jimmy Savile being part of Satan, that satanic ring, but you know, do we, the mainstream media crap, or do we seek good gnosis and knowledge, from, going back to the Greek word Liber, and the books like the Kabbalion and the End of All Evil. An informed nation, information. 
We need to be an informed nation. We can't get there in ignorance. The quality of input, water, we're mostly made of water, so the water is what, what sort of water we put in is, is very important. That was, I think, a couple of goes distilling water, and I scraped it out with a little bit of water, and it's just absolutely disgusting. So if you're not distilling your water, or if you've got a reverse osmosis system, that's, those would be the, the two best. I mean, the gravitation filtration systems, I understand, do fail at some point. You're not going to remove all of the heavy metals and all of the fluorides and everything from them. So that's, I'd recommend reverse osmosis or dis distillation. And are anybody familiar with Dr. Rimoto? Cool. Yeah, this guy did some experiments on water and I, I love his experiments because it shows the unseen world and it brings it to, to visible reality. So he basically um, parted frequencies or vibrations on the water by means of thoughts, pictures or written words or music. So whether it was love, you'd get something geometric and, and beautiful or hate was all discorded. So with this water, sorry, yeah, it'd, it'd flash freeze. So once it's been exposed to said vibration, it's then flash frozen and photographed. And you can look at his work. So everything that's had positive vibrations looks beautiful and everything which is negative looks discorded and, and nasty. And I was just wondering what, what Dr. Moto would have to say about the monster energy drink nowadays with the Hebrew 666 on it, right? And you're putting that in your body. So increase the quality of input. An eclectic, organic, plant-based diet. Lots and lots of colour. So do you have this? Did you want this to become you? Or do you want this to become you and have a very short life with lots of suffering, I'd imagine? And there's some Karelian photography here, which is, a, I think it's a Russian type of photography. And that's, that's an apple and that's a steak. So this is showing life for like energy, basically. As Tesla said, um, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of frequency and vibration. Well, if you think of what you're putting in on a vibratory level, that or that. Healing the world views. So we need to have a, the view of human nature is that we're not born evil. Well, there's, there is psychopathy out there, and there are a number of psychopaths that are born that way, but it's such a small percentage, it's less than 1%. So it's the programming. We're not born evil. Uh, it's very much like a computer again, you know, what the coding and the program is what, what you, how you're going to get. It's not all about money. The value of an individual isn't about money and what they've got and what they look like and what they sound like. We all have infinite value. We're all infinite worth. And the possibility of change. No, nothing's going to change. It's always been this way. We need masters. We need rulers. Well, tell that to the caterpillar. Right? Uh, Manly Pooh Hall said something along the lines of there is nothing changeless but change itself. It's the, the one universal constant. We all, we do need to serve truth. We need to serve it. Because truth, although it can never be destroyed, but humans can. And if we refuse to act and serve truth and defend it, because we, we, we can develop a, a positive outcome if we do. But if we don't, then you know, we're just gonna, we, this road is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. You know, we need to think about our future generations, you know, our grandchildren. The native Indians used to think seven, cult, we, we don't even think one, we don't even care about the planet we're leaving for our kids, for God's sake. It's just the, the deplorable state we're in. So yes, we need to care enough to learn the truth ourselves and then develop the courage to continually speak it to others. Which is why it's called the true great work, because people don't want to go there. People don't want to change. And they will dig their nails into the floor and you'll have to drag them there. And it takes courage to stand up and do it. And we've got the moral obligation. 
you know, if you've taken this information on board today, unfortunately, sorry guys, I've now given you the moral obligation to, to spread it as well. However you decide to do that, through art or your conversations, however, but you, there is a moral obligation there. So remember, to know and not to do is to really not know or care. It takes dedication. It is like cleaning the sewers of humanity. It's not a pretty job. You, know, you guys are great, and it's, it's nice to come here and, and do this. But you know, I would rather have been with my family, really. You know, but I've got uh, I've got an obligation because I, I get it, and I had the opportunity to speak here, which I'm very grateful of for this platform to some new ears. But it's, it's not it's not a good you know it takes time. It took me time to put this presentation together. So it, it, it takes dedication to serve truth, to cleanse people of poison worldviews, to talk reason and truth to dogma, to get people to care about themselves, right? That's ultimately what this is. It's crazy, but how, how, how do you get someone to care about themselves? To purify the information stream. It's a dirty and arduous task, but it takes persistence. Unfortunately, some are born with spiritual immune systems that sooner or later give rejection to the illusory worldview grafted upon them birth through social conditioning. They begin sensing that something is amiss and start looking for answers. Inner knowledge and anomalous outer experiences show them a side of reality others are oblivious to. And so begin their journey of awakening. Each step of the journey is made by following the heart instead of following the crowd and by choosing knowledge over the veils of ignorance. Fortunately, but like I said, that does come with the, the moral obligation and the burden because we don't want this when our grandchildren are saying, so what did you do to try and stop that? So ultimately, you know, we do need to get to this level of consciousness and understand that as one suffer, all suffer. We need to get to that critical mass of understanding, which is ultimately be excellent to each other. No. This symbol here represents love and anarchy, so love and freedom. And Michael Jackson sung it. I'm going to speak it. <laughs> Not going to... I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. Develop true respect. Respect, re, spectari, to look again, to make a look again at oneself, to take another look at oneself and make the required change. And yeah, that's that's it. That's it.